with Joe Nash on Limerick's Live 95 FM. From the bells at the Redemptorist Church to the sound of children playing in the People's Park, from a train pulling into uh, the aforementioned Colbert Station to buskers on Cruises Street, the Limerick Soundscapes Project has captured all of these sounds and more besides from everyday life in Limerick. The project, instigated by Dr Tony Langlow from Mary Eye and Dr Aileen Delan from the World Academy of Music and Dance at UL, and working in conjunction with the National Learning Network in Raheen, sees learners with additional support needs capturing aspects of urban soundscapes by recording sounds in Limerick. The project's been running for three years and was recognised earlier this year when the group from the NLN won a prize at the Star Awards organised by the National Adult Learning Organisation, ANTUS. And uh, as part of our Limerick Lives series, Live 95 FM's Alan Morrissey has been with all of those involved and has brought us their story in two parts. In the first part, you'll hear from both Tony and Aileen on how the project began, how it works and how it took inspiration from previous soundscapes projects elsewhere, while Dr. Kieran Ryan from Mary I talks about teaching the classes. You'll also hear Carmel Hanley from the NLN on their association with the Soundscape project and LNL students uh, Kevin Hanley and Owen Mulligan on what they have taken out of their involvement with it. My name is Tony Longwa. I'm from the Media and Communications Department of Mary Immaculate College. It was a joint project from the outset. It was Aileen's idea and we collaborated on it. The idea is to collect the sounds of the city in a very simple way, giving people instruction on how to use digital recorders, to go out to the places that they uh, that are important to them and to record them for editing and uploading onto a, a sound map. So there's an online map of all the sounds of the city. That's it in, in its bones. What we found, that what, the direction we wanted to take it into was to work with particular communities because we realised that people hear their city in very different ways as individuals and as uh, different parts of the city. So the idea was that we would work with people who would then select the sounds that they thought represented their own community best. So there's, there's a huge difference between um, being right in the middle of the city or in one leafy suburb to uh, you know uh, other areas. It's an opportunity not only for people to put the sounds of their um, their lives, uh, their community online, but also to listen to one another's. So it's a kind of a, a sonic bridge between the different communities who live. In, in Limerick City. I'm Aileen Delan. I'm a lecturer in music in the Irish World Academy in the University of Limerick. And I think we started discussing it in 2012 and we quickly realised that the only way we could judge its uh, usefulness or efficacy was to actually run a pilot. Mm. And uh, Tony managed to get some seed funding from Mary I. Um, um, so we used that money to buy some fundamental recorders and we started the project uh, really over the summer period in 2013 with a small select group of people from various uh, different groups active retired citizens group, Doris Slimley, places like that, just a select few people. And over a period of about two to three months, those um, initial workshops with communities, they were integrated workshops, were facilitated by Kieran Ryan. And we went and we sat down with people and explained things and, you know, how to go about doing it. The big thing about the project was it wasn't in any way kind of course. So we approached these community groups separately and said, would you like us to give a presentation and see if any of your members were interested? So it was very much on a volunteer basis and based on interest so when people self-selected themselves we ran these workshops gave people recorders it was quite amazing they went off for two to three weeks had very different experiences uh, you know we've stories of people saying they'd never leave the house without their handbag their umbrella and their sound recorder <laughs> and as well as I suppose tracking their own city sounds what we found was people felt emboldened to go to different parts of the city as well and completely deal with Limerick on a sonic and acoustic level and not on a visual level um, so this started to change their relationship with the city It's like having a fish right? you've got a fly fish and you're a fly fish patrol you can't do that on back from you know what I'm saying it's all exactly the same with ports I can't be bringing my ports back around the bottom you know what I'm my name is Carmel Hanley from National Learning Network and um, we got involved with the Limerick 
Soundscape Group with our students here. National Learning Network Foundation Skill Programme provides students with a range of personal, social and work-related skills. It is designed to help students just like the lads here now to achieve greater levels of independent and community integration. The reason why we would have got involved with the Limerick Soundscape team were for in order for the lads to achieve their quality, the QQI Quality Qualification Ireland Level 3 Community Participation Module, which was all about in linking into the community and our partnership will go on forever into the future with the Limerick Soundscape team. I'm Kieran Ryan uh, from Mary Macla College and I've been involved in the Limerick Soundscapes project for about three years, I'd say, at this stage. I initially was brought on because I was doing um, PhD research and my supervisor was Tony Langua and he's kind of suggested it might be a project I might be interested in and I came on board initially as a research assistant and I suppose my role was in terms of recruiting and kind of training facilitating different community groups in terms of how to use the equipment but how to also go out and record sound and what to look out for and things like that. When we think about technology we can be quite ageist about it as well mm. but, but we had some active retirement people who were involved in our first training group you know they took it pretty quickly I mean it, it's not overly elaborate um, technology yeah. and as I said to them I was like you know if you can drive a car that's way more complex than using a, a digital recorder. So most people actually took to it quite quickly. I mean, obviously there was, you know, times where they thought they recorded something and they recorded nothing or the sound wasn't up. And what we did find was that a lot of times when people brought back recordings, they were actually quite surprised with what they got. There were different sounds coming from different directions that they mightn't have necessarily um, experienced in that moment. But people generally took to it quite quickly. My name is Owen Mulligan, I'm here a student with the NLN and we were very privileged to get involved with ULMRI over the Soundscapes project. I think the word partnership is a perfect word because it was right from the get-go an equal partnership between NLN and ULMRI. There was a huge amount of respect shown from them towards us, which I think is something that we were very pleased to get because I think we would struggle to get a lot of contact with mm. institutions like ULMRI. A lot of people, when you mention the name LNN, they've never heard of us. They don't even know who we are. Yeah. For us to actually get in with ULMRI, it was a huge achievement. And I think in future, it'll make it a lot easier for us to get into those areas. In my own opinion, I think the NLN is, is, is probably one of the best kept secrets because they don't promote themselves that much. But what they do is hugely effective in terms of the social gains, the confidence. But I think a lot of the ways it's just working alongside people get a lot of empathy, sympathy um, and understanding of different people and the different environments. I think that was very evident working with you and Mary I. And I'm Kevin Handley and it was good to get involved with the Soundscape project and uh, we, we learned a lot from it. Carmel gave us the idea and uh, we had a conversation about it and we thought maybe it was a good way to link in with, with you and Mary I as, uh, you know, we're students as well and uh, it helps us for confidence and independence to link in with a university and, you know, college. Because we hope then in our future that we'll be, you know, going to college or doing a PLCO courses and whatever. So it, it was good for that kind of sense as well. They came out to us and uh, we had a conversation, you know, with over tea and stuff. Just kind of thought, you know what, there's something here, we can grow on it. You know, there's a good base and the students that we had wanted to um, learn more about it and how to use the equipment and uh, we kind of decided, yeah, we'll go on with it. It was a good partnership. This isn't the first Soundscape project. The Soundscapes have been running since the late 70s. They started off really in places like Vancouver and the sort of sonic mapping of places has, has got an established history. What's, what's happened now, though, is that, of course, the technology makes it more accessible to people to get involved in it themselves. And this is something that we're particularly interested in because most of the previous soundscape projects have been top-down 
they've been people in universities who've decided to map the sounds of a place really through the ears of a very small number of people. We consciously wanted to do something at a community level. And so rather than us at the top level vetting and editing what everybody does, we'd like to pass those responsibilities on to the community group themselves. On the other hand, we do have projects like Salford and others in Glasgow, places in London, where people just upload material from, the, from their smartphones. And those valuable but at the same time, there's, there's no filtering in those examples and there's no um, coherence because it's, it's a sort of the atomized individuals who are just sending something up that they think is amusing and there's no real detail about where they collected it. So what we've done as, as lightly as possible, we do include in the recordings some data about where and when and why it was recorded, very lightly. And the, the recordist has rights to remove the recording as well. So we're trying to put as much of the authority on this back onto a community as a sort of self regulating and self-recording group rather than have individuals putting things up that which possibly no one ever listens to again this will at least be representative as far as the community is concerned and not dependent on elites to decide what is acceptable Buskers in Limerick playing Ring of Fire, ending part one of that Limerick Lives by Live 95 FM's Alan Morrissey on the Limerick Soundscapes project. Limerick Today with Joe Nash on Limerick's Live 95 FM.